Hello, and I'm here as part of our Back to the Future series with Jodie Bardin, the MD of City Court & Co. Jodie, lovely to see you. How are you? Hello. Good morning, Belinda. Absolutely. I'm great. I'm great. Thank you very much. Good. Good Good to see you. And thanks for, for being part of this. So I guess a kind of kickoff question, and, and we've known each other quite a long time, but uh, not the whole of the, the 10 years that we've been around. What trends have you seen in investment and finance? Um, just maybe, maybe just setting the scene a bit for what the last decade has looked like in your world. Yeah, so we, I run a, a, a small investment bank in London and we've been through, you know, uh, one crisis after another in, in financial services uh, globally, really, um, to be honest. It's, you know, we had a, you know, a strong start to this, to, to the to the year this year. So there is now a, a, a solid recovery um, in sight. So you're finding that there's IPOs taking place on the public markets, um, fundraising is taking place on the public markets on the London Stock Exchange. New York is very healthy at the minute as well. Valuations are reasonable, uh, uh, not bullish, but reasonable again, which helps to uh, give confidence in the private marketplace. So it's even if you're not a quoted company, you'll find that it's, uh, it, it does reflect your, your business and your ability to, uh, to drive, uh, drive customers, but also to drive investment into your, into your business, um, private equity or venture capital. So um, last year was a washout. There was almost no funding taking place. It was a very difficult marketplace in the quoted and, and unquoted space. Um, uh, and obviously the previous two years we had, we had the pandemic. So um, these big global crises and globe, uh, you know, geopolitical uh, turmoil is, is, devastating to the financial services. Um, and then that, that trickles down obviously to companies in agri-tech and, and all sectors really that need to raise funding to grow their businesses. Sure, and I think when we first met, you'd been doing quite a lot of work in the space sector. And I'm really interested in your reflections on what's happened in the space sector and, and what we can learn for agri-tech from, from the work that you were doing there. Yeah, well, now the space sector is is very much entwined with agri tech, um, and this has really only happened. I, I'm sure you've noticed it because you, you're having events around that that the space and agri tech sectors um, over the past sort of 18 months. To be honest, when the agri tech industry realized that it could harness space technologies to make farming more efficient, more environmentally friendly, um, and they and that. And, and they can improve their PL by utilizing, you know, space technologies, everything from obviously monitoring your farm and the gases coming off the crops and things like that. The photography, the near real time photography you can get, you can get um, through utilizing space technologies, but you can actually run your combines, you can run all of your drones. And uh, we're working with companies trying to put together, combine some of these agri-tech companies, space agri-tech companies, so that the farmers themselves can have sort of one app that does the basic things rather than 10 apps that, you know, one for the drones and one for the combine and one for the observation. Um, so it's mainly the downstream stuff and what we call sort of the applications in new space, which Agritech is embracing. Um, and it's making an enormous difference. I've spoken to loads of farmers over the past six months that have said it's really helped them cut costs and create, you know, uh, a more efficient farming particularly, you know, in play, remote places, South America, for example, where they have these enormous farms that are very difficult to get to. Um, they no longer have to even go out on their farms sometimes. They can they can monitor and manage the whole farm from use, utilizing space technologies. Fantastic. So looking ahead to the next decade, what would you, what would be your call to arms and to whom? Who needs to do what? Uh, over the next decade to really unlock the as yet locked up potential, do you think? 
So it's a combination. Obviously, government needs to get more involved um, in farming. We, we, are, there's you know food and water, <laughs> but the basics of life. Uh, there is a, a global crisis that, that somehow governments are trying to ignore, um, and um, the governments need to not only provide subsidies, but the big thing that we we think that really needs to change with government is they need to take on commercial contracts from providers or suppliers. That's how you help the industry, right? Not just throwing money at it, but take on contracts, commercial contracts for government, you know, and for export <laughs> in the UK. You know, it's it's it really is absolutely dire, I think, on that front. And, and, and also on the space front, there's a lot of uh, initiatives going on, which we're involved with, um, with uh, with our, with our government MPs. We've got a few MPs that are specialists in in space and agri, and they're getting very hands on. But also um, the sustainability side of it. So, you know, one side of us wants to move towards full sustainability and um, eating. Uh, foods that are grown more sustainably uh, and the other side of us wants cheap food so there's got to be a happy meeting between the two and i think that you know industry has to align with government has to align with sustainability um, policies and protocols and and evolution and sustainability and they all need to kind of i know it's maybe a, a a dream world that i'm living in but they all need to try to work together so that if we're talking about the uk marketplace and how we feed our populations in the next 10 years how do we utilize technologies space technologies for example how do we set policy and how do we get farmers in a in a situation where they are, they can grow their businesses um, and still have uh, have uh, an increasing marketplace. So, what do people want food-wise? People want more and more of, you know, more. They're eating more uh, non-animal proteins. All right. So that that's a reality. So, how do we feed into the 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 the, the growing community of, of people that are, are are going away from meat? Um, uh, you know, and there's loads of crops we can focus on here in the UK, uh, growing and expanding um, that can feed into that industry. So I see that industry going crazy. We advise a, a very large non-animal protein uh, uh, fund here in the UK. Um, and Bill Gates has part of his fund dedicated to this. And they're using natural products to, to put together um, all sorts of derivatives of beans and things like that, which mm -hmm. which uh, which the youngsters these days are you know are demanding. So I think that side of the market we can't ignore it. Um, I think on the water side of things, I don't, you know, the the, the there is the in ten years time that it, we are going to be very aware of this global shortage of drinking water and fresh water, right? So that's another major component. And yeah, again, as I said, Belinda, I think that government needs to be less political and less focused on their own politics and more focused on mm -hmm. the people who've hired them, which is the population, to, to look after our children in 10 years' time and make sure our children will have adequate food and water. Mm. And, and I guess the space tech area is really well placed to help inform those really quite challenging land use decisions and conversations you know we've only got finite land on this little little blue and green ball spinning through space and actually the, the technology to be able to understand what might be the best use of different parcels of that land really plays into your agenda very nicely doesn't it yeah yeah absolutely so the, with technologies these days from space you can you can view down to a centimeter on on the planet earth and in near real time so and all that's free you don't have to pay for that that data so anybody can access it they may not know what to do with it once they access it but um so so observation obs, observing your the, the the farmland globally is very important one big change that is happening as well is from a sustainability perspective there's more and more regulations coming into play uh, and the uk is part of a big initiative actually that's helping to um, set regulations for for space and um, where it affects sustainability on earth and we put together a not me but um, a quasi government organization uh, an initiative to help to start regulating space 
uh, and its impact on Earth and its impact in space. And nine countries have signed that um, uh, initiative so far. So Japan, Canada, UK, Switzerland. Um, so big, influential countries. Um, and this, this, if you talk to anybody in the space industry and space tech and where it meets agri-tech, they'll tell you regulation is absolutely the key. And so UK has taken the initiative to get start the ball rolling on getting some regulations in place. So this is so important. Um, and, you know, uh, I, I think that, you know, you've, you, there, you can monitor absolutely everything. So corporates are also, you know, if you look at Anglo America's annual report, for example, in the back section, there'll be their ES, ESG uh, reporting requirements. And now that they have access to space tech, they, they greenwashing, and all of that is 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 not as possible because there's live data as to what's happening in these regions, um, and deforestation is not possible. Um, you can't hide it now. So this is enormous, enormously important, and this is only in the past, say, twelve months, that that corporates are are having to report more clearly as to what is happening in respect to their um, their mining uh, and their production of food, uh, uh, treatment of water, treatment of land. It's really interesting time. Wow. So that leads me on really nicely to my, my final question is, is where does City Court and Co sit in this journey to the future? I think you've mapped out really clearly um, the vision that that we need to aspire to and and what City Court and Co's leadership role in, in that journey. Yeah, so we're the UK and Europe's leading um, investment bank in the space industry. So we were the first in and uh, there's other people coming in now. But so we have an amazing team. Uh, we're also raising um, a space fund. It's called Space for Earth and it's going to invest in uh, applications uh, which in space which promote sustainability on the planet Earth. Um, we're raising 100 million and hope to have a first close in that um, by the end of the year. So it's very exciting. And then we'll raise two more funds beyond that. Um, so we're taking an active role in making sure that uh, the right companies are invested in, um, in our view, that segue between space and sustainability, the two areas that we specialize. Aside from that, on the corporate finance side, we're, we're helping to raise funds for several very exciting companies, doing a little bit of M&A. So we're joining companies together, as I mentioned earlier, that are, that are maybe better off being part of a bigger group um, so we're, we're, we're raising some funds for uh, one of the UK one of the world's leader leading rocket rocket companies at the minute um, you could probably guess who that leader is um, we're raising some funds for a really exciting um, European uh, in space uh, logistics uh, technology business which is the best in the world at what it does uh, we're raising some funds for a, uh, a space AI company um, mm -hmm. because space is really complicated now with cybersecurity and AI and yeah. all of that. So uh, we've got a leader in, in that, the world leader in that area. So what we do is we cherry pick the best in the industry because we can't raise money for everybody at the same time and everybody wants money at the minute, for example. Yeah, yeah. But we also, we're trying to do a lot more in mergers and acquisitions and encourage companies to consider merging together for growth. So combine organic and non-organic growth. So get some money in, yes, layer that on top, but why not? buy a technology company rather than re always recreate your own technology. Mm. Sometimes it makes a lot more sense. Then they say, if, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I guess that's very true when you're pushing at the frontiers of space tech. It is very much so, very, very much so. One of the guys on our team is called is a guy is a wonderful gentleman called Sir, Sir Martin Sweeting, who's the founder of Surrey Satellites. Uh, and he's part of our, our space fund. And Sir Martin is an amazing man. And um, that's exactly what he said to me when I asked him to be part of it. Um, he's really excited about being part of the fund and, and, and helping some of the, the most meaningful companies make, their, make, their, uh, make, a, make a success of what they're doing within space and within the larger sustainability environment. So, you know, he, Sir Martin has designed, developed, built and launched the first ever small satellite in the world of the 1980s. So he's, he's a grandfather of space. And there, from a tech perspective, he's got a very, very assured footing on what works and what doesn't work. 
Um, so it's really, really important. So I think this is the era of awakening really for the space and where agritech meets space sector. I think that eyes are wide open. People are realizing that they can mitigate risk, they can increase profitability and they can grow their businesses by utilizing space technologies with agritech and making, making it more, making their farming uh, more sustainable. Jody, I feel thoroughly inspired by that and I look forward to coming back in 10 years and revisiting this conversation and seeing how City Court & Co has helped really move the needle on these conversations. What a pleasure to talk to you, Jody, and thank you so much for your time and we'll see you soon. Thank you, Belinda. Thank you. Thank you.